The, uh, the boy figured you didn't want us getting in the way while he cleaned up all this shit. So we's going out to get some more liquor. I, I ain't cleaning nothing, I'll swipe. Besides, it's New Year's Day. Ain't no place open to get booze. Don't mean there's no booze out there. Percy Spencer was the king of getting booze when no one else could. And whether he was making moonshine in prison or boiling the alcohol out of a tin of shoe polish, he was always giving helpful advice to Kevin about how to get hammered when you had no cash. Here's how you get free booze at a hotel. Expensive place like this usually has private parties for big companies on the weekends. Put your learning hat on and follow me. Hear that, boy? That's the sound of an open bar. Just walk in like you belong there and no one will hassle you. What'll it be, boys? Give us two pictures of gin. So, how long you tubing down with the KKK? Don't know. I don't listen to no rap music, except for that chubby checker guy. Get the hell out of my way whilst I catch up to you, fella. Oh, baby, baby, won't you shake it to the left? Chubby Checker is one fat twisted son of a bitch. Watch me dance. Wow, baby. What's the matter? Don't you guys like dancing? Okay, so you're a good provider. That don't mean you're off the hook helping me clean up this shithole. I don't even know half these guys. I'm surprised there's a man in this town you ain't banged. That's different from knowing him, asshole. Come on, boy. It's the morning after New Year's Eve, so there's gotta be leftovers out there someplace. As Kevin wandered through the tattered remnants of the celebration, he felt only a gnawing emptiness reminding him of his emotional incapacity. It had been seven hours since his last beer, and he was already starting to go into withdrawal. Hey, you got any booze on you? I can't help you. Try the hedges outside the hotel. They're always dropping booze off of the balcony. To warn you, though, there's a bad car wreck around the corner. Lots of blood. Ugh. Oh, well. Happy New Year. Car wreck. The day's picking up. As Kevin and the old man rounded the corner, they recognized Lomax, Kevin's tow truck driving cousin, who was on contract with the police department. Hey, Lomax. Holy smokes, what the hell happened? An accident. <laughs> Happens every new year. A pretty awful mess. <laughs> uh, this'll destroy their families. Yeah, well, the holidays are a family time. Listen, Lomax, we gotta find some booze pretty bad. Kevin's DTs were starting to get worse, and his imaginary friend, Alan the Magic Goose, was getting really pissed off. The goose needs booze, boy! The goose needs booze! There's probably some leftover booze in the car. <laughs> the police will probably want some of it as evidence. But heck, there's so much you might as well help yourself. Get some for Aunt Anastasia, too. Happy New Year! <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus, that's the good stuff. Things were looking up, but then Kevin made a common mistake among jonesing addicts and downed all the liquor and pills in one shot. Way to go, you psychotic little bastard! How many times do I gotta tell you not to take it all at once? Whoa, you look pretty rough there, kid. Kinda like that crying clown poster. Oh shit, cops! Move along, mister. We don't like bystanders hanging around an accident. Hey, what's that? Get the sergeant! We missed a corpse over here! That's right. Well, I'll just move along, officer. <laughs> My boy's dead! Don't cry, Ma. I checked his wallet. We're drinking imported beer tonight. He, he 
would have wanted it that way. Welcome to a purgatory, Spencer. The most morally ambiguous place in the universe. I am Dante. Prepare to spend infinity doomed to a spiritually vacuous boredom. Purgatory does have an upside. You can do anything of debatable cultural value. So, enjoy a table dance or one of our video lottery terminals. Jackpot, boy. Hate to break the news to you, but you ain't dead yet. It's now your time. Now come back to reality so I can kick your ever-loving white trash ass. When Kevin woke up, he found himself on a table in the morgue. He'd been stripped naked, and a strange man stood over him with a knife, just like his first day in juvenile detention. We'll begin with initial incision into the subcutaneous layer. Kevin thought the doctor was going to try something fruity on account of him stealing all his clothes and sent him straight right quick. Amateur, you overdosed like some cheese-eating high school kid on prom night. I can't believe you, moron! Kevin told Alan that if he didn't like the way he ran his life, he could go screw himself and find another head to live in. Maybe I'll just do that, you broken-headed little bastard. Have a nice life, idiot boy. Hey, Percy. Hey, there's a duck in my head. I'm a goof, you effing tool. Good old Alan's here to help you think proper, especially when it comes to buying booze and pills from Charlie. Here you go, Percy. Got your name written on it and everything. <laughs> Heck, you know where he keeps it. Just take it. Percy thought for a few minutes. Then he thought for a few more minutes. I could steal Charlie's crop and keep it all for myself. That's right. Then you and I can get nicely toasted. This could be the start of a beautiful What are you talking about? Ain't there my score with no fucking duck. I'm a goose, asshole. And I said duck. After a few days, Kevin was having his own problems dealing with Alan's absence. He never suspected the influence of an imaginary friend contributed so much to his confidence level. Now he was the patsy for every school thug who wanted a piece of him. What are you girls doing? He said Jean-Paul Sartre was his favorite existentialist philosopher. Like, hello, does the word Kierkegaard ring any bells? Yeah, or Nietzsche. What about Nietzsche? Let him go this instant. You girls should attend the Up With Teens rally at the community center on Friday. Perhaps that would elevate you to a more ladylike standard of conduct. Yeah, right. That's what we'll do, Miss Calhoun. It was Kevin's bitterest humiliation. He'd become the first kid in history ever to be sworn by the school's debating team. Jesus Christ, ain't there nothing but empties in here? Hey, boy. Good thing you didn't die, because I need you to help me find a shovel. What happened to your face? Looks kind of bumpier than usual. Is that what the kids are wearing these days? Kevin told him how he'd gotten beaten up by girls and dragged around the track. <laughs> stop, stop it, boy. She reminds me of the day I stood up to the school. <laughs> hey, watch where you're parking it, Wheelie. <laughs> then I dropped out. Listen, help me find a shovel. Charlie's got a whole trailer full of weed and we're going to steal it. I won't need no drugs for three whole days. You know any cars in the neighborhood with a trailer hitch? Hey, Percy, thought I heard you talking about me. Uh, no, we were just talking about... Jeez, Percy, what happened to Kevin's face? He's getting uh, roughed up by bullies? Percy didn't want Charlie to know that Kevin had been beaten up by girls because then he'd think Percy hadn't raised no man. So he came up with a lie that made him sound more manly. I, uh, I beat him up myself. Gosh, sure did a good job. Runs in the family. Listen, Charlie, you want to do me a favor and keep an eye on the house for a while? Wife's been into the bourbon and I don't want her falling asleep with her cigarette. 
Been through three coaches this year already. No problemo. And don't go putting no moves on her neither. And don't lie neither, because I'll know from the mark. Hey, a, a lot of guys have belt buckles like this. Kevin had to get back to school before lunch was over, so he and Percy agreed to meet after class and take care of business. We have the Pythagorean theorem. Isn't it true that Pythagoras smoked pot? I should think not. But this book of lists I got from the library says he did. And it says Salvador Dali ate hash and that Elton John is gay. Timmy Wilkins, there's no way Elton John is gay. You're making me very frustrated. Ooh, Miss Calhoun is frustrated. There's a news flash. Ooh. Suddenly, Alan the Magic Goose appeared in the teacher's head. Well, looky, looky. What we have here is a drab little receptacle of broken dreams, soiled romances, and antidepressants. I'm going to make this babe rock. Who are you? Me? I'm Alan, the magic goose. The strokingest, smokingest fowl that ever crawled up inside your amygdala. And I'm here to tell you, you shouldn't be taking this kind of crap from some punk. You're right. I've been taking crap from these teens all day. You ought to set him straight. You ought to take a stand. It's time to lash out and let him have it. You're right. I'm going to do it. Timmy Wilkins, sit down. Damn it! That's it? You say damn it and you call that striking out? Oh, you think I should have stamped my foot? Alan figured that trying to pull Mrs. Calhoun's cork out might provide more of a challenge than he was prepared to accept. From the back of the class, Kevin noticed something familiar in the way his teacher wigged out. was the greatest atomic scientist, you might want to remember the name, Enrico Fermi. As Kevin hung helplessly from the swing set, the delicate sting of cotton breeze inching ever more menacingly into his sweaty crevice, he wasn't thinking about Enrico Fermi. Kevin was figuring he'd better get a new imaginary friend before the chess club got a hold of him. Hey kid, I'm Hacky, the cigar smoking roller skating monkey. Rumor has it you need a new imaginary friend. Kevin asked Hacky what he did. Uh, I roller skate and smoke cigars. Sometimes I can even make you hallucinate about evil clowns, but that's just something I do when you eat Greek food. <laughs> Kevin didn't think the monkey's repertoire was suited to his needs. I am Zoltar, the Transformer. By day, I am a titan of mechanized justice. But by night, I put on high heels and a sexy nightdress. And he wasn't interested in a robot that couldn't tell the difference between a transformer and a transvestite. Uh, gee, mister, I was sent here by a temp agency. They said you needed some short-term delusions and paranoias. Kevin figured this was the best compromise, since the kid seemed flexible and could work odd hours. Whoa! All right, wait till the 4-H club here's about this. Hey, boy. Quit fucking around on the swings and get over here. We got work to do. Come on, Charlie. I told you, I want to recreate that scene from nine and a half weeks. I know, sweetie, but uh, all you got in the fridge is a half-eaten thin of herring and a jar of expired horseradish. Use your imagination. Uh, I can't, honey. I just can't seem to focus. Sounds weird, but uh, I keep seeing this goose telling me it wants to be my imaginary friend and uh, do all kinds of bad stuff. Magic goose! I don't mind the idea of a threesome, Charlie, but a goose? That's disgusting! Really? Hmm, well, uh, how's about my buddy Joe, the construction worker? I owe him a favor, uh, him and a few pals. Oh, Charlie, always with your sweet talking. Soon Alan found the only other brain in the whole town as drugged up as Kevin. It was the old widow Coulson. In the morning, in the evening, hey, we got fun. Whoa, this old bitty's lost most of a brain already. Just a tiny neuro meatball marinating in a sumptuous synaptic stew of diuretics and Alzheimer's medication. Who the hell are you? I am Alan, the magic goose, 
and I'm better than all your medication combined, with the possible exception of uh, methamphetamines, I'll bet you have some questions for me. Who the hell are you? Hmm, gonna have to do some work on the short-term memory, but so far you are the best candidate. Charlie's got all his marijuana buried in a trailer, but we can't throw it away until you dig it out. Kevin told his imaginary friend that he didn't much like being the sucker stuck with the shit work. Well, maybe you could tell him that things would go better if you both cooperated. Ow! Hey, this wasn't part of the job description. I'm out of here. Don't take all day, boy. Kevin made the work go faster by fantasizing that he was digging Percy's grave. But he couldn't help thinking he wouldn't have been such a sucker if Alan had been around. I once had sex with F. Scott Fitzgerald. Oh man, don't you ever do anything interesting like shoot at squirrels or hold up a liquor store? I once had sex with Charlie Chaplin. Everybody had sex with Charlie Chaplin. Come on, Grandma, you can't spend your declining years rocking in your little old chair. Let's go out and do something nasty. Don't like going outside. Too many ethnic people. Damn, why did I ever bother with this old prune? Just as Alan was about to give up again, Widow Coulson took her medication, and for the first time, Alan understood why old age really is the best years. You dance divinely, Mr. Valentino. Won't you take me away from all this? That's right, sweetie. Alan's gonna take you out and show you how to live. Now go get a coat hanger so we can steal us a car. Stay behind the yellow line, please. Old Jill had been a bus driver for 20 years, so he knew things a bus driver can only learn from years of experience. Like how to splash old women, or how to start and stop the bus in quick succession to make people bounce around like a pinball when they tried to sit down. Main Street, uh, next stop Main Street. Uh, I used to have a girlfriend up on the street. Ah, but you know, she was too wild. I could not tame her. Perhaps it was my bedroom eyes that were my downfall. Elgin Street. Next up, Elgin Street. May the almighty creator of the universe bless the operators of our community transit. You should wait until the bus stops or you'll get hurt, you idiot. No! There's a sweet little vehicle. You brought the coat hanger? You sure did, Sonny. Then let's get over that barbed wire fence. be driving like the little old lady from Pethadino. Now shove that coat hanger in the door and we'll be out of here. I will not. This is my favorite padded plastic coat hanger for my night dress. It's perfumed and everything. Plastic coat hanger? You can't break into a car with that. Now go back home and get a real one. Yes, sir, Mr. Valentino. That's it. Any second now, you should feel a button click over. Ah, shit! That sounds like dogs. I hate dogs. They smell when they're wet. Ah, help me, Rudy! This is just humiliating. God damn it, now what? I know we got plenty of gas. We siphoned three gallons out of that diesel truck. Cops find us with this stolen car. They're going to find the drugs in the trailer. You go unhook it and I'll steal us another car. Wow, Charlie, your lady friend sure knows how to throw a party. Anastasia ain't shy about entertaining, uh, but I think it's pretty obvious she ain't no lady. Nope, but she's all woman. <laughs> what do you know? 
I own the trailer just like that. Kevin tried his best, but he couldn't stop the runaway trailer. I'm waiting till she's married too. Shaniqua, and I can solve life's problems with simple answers. I'm the janitor. I just walked on stage by accident. Sorry. And now, Chad, the sexiest and most sensitive member of Up With Teens, is going to sing a song about his mother. Oh God, this is so beautiful, I can't bear it. Thanks, Margie. As you know, I don't feel things the same way as most people. I feel them much deeper, in my heart. And that's why I'm singing this song for Mom. Oh my God, I love you, Chad. We all love you, Chad. Mother, your love was... Whoa, like what's all that smoke? It's making me feel kind of hungry. Everybody get out of the building. It's on fire. Hey, screw you and your whole conformist ideology. When Kevin finally came out of his coma, he found himself in the hospital bed right next to the widow Coulson. Kevin, my little baby's alive. I'm gonna squeeze you until your sutures pop. Yeah, and I'm gonna whoop your ass for trying to steal the stash. Like hell you are. Charlie told me you've been beating on him. That's a fucking lie. I should know I'm the <laughs> While Kevin's parents embarrassed themselves, he noticed he had another visitor. Yo, Kevin, this whole fight thing between us, it's too much damn work. Let's bury the hatchet. Rudy, you can't leave me. Just watch me, baby. Watch and learn. Welcome back, Spencer. Staying longer this time? We're just here for the strippers and gambling. Now get my friend a table dance. <laughs> <laughs> 